now we have Senate President Craig Blair on the line with us. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning to the five people that are listening. <laughs> <laughs> Are you there? I'm well, right here. If you're right on here. the phone, that means there's four. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just trying to play off of it, and you know what a terrible start to the show when you're using me as a promo lead-in. <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> so, I understand we're in pretty good financial shape. No, no we're managing our funds well, and uh, on paper it it looks like it. Uh, but so I'm I'm taking it. You want me to talk now and give a landscape view of this, and you can ask questions. Correct. That's correct. Okay, so we finished up our fiscal year uh, above budget, one point eight billion dollars. It's actually one and a half. Well, by the time we get month thirteen in here, it's probably going to be one point nine billion dollars above the revenue estimates. Uh, personal income tax uh, was up uh, four hundred ninety-one million dollars for the year. That's a hundred and twenty-two percent over where we budgeted. Severance tax blew it through the roof, and uh, we're keeping our numbers low. We've got uh, we do a severance tax estimate of two hundred and fifty million dollars, but uh, we exceeded six hundred. 196 million. So that was 379% above the revenue estimates. Consumer sales tax was uh, 239 million, actually 240 million uh, above the estimates for the year. And I'm not talking about for the month on this one since we finished up the end of the fiscal year. So that finished the year at 116% uh, above. Cigarette, uh, the, excuse me, tobacco tax collections for the year was dead down of and so that, that's actually a good economic indicator of the health of the people of West Virginia is getting a little bit better uh, from that standpoint rainy day fund let's jump to that last year at this point in time we had 956 million dollars in the rainy day fund this year it's 943 and if anybody's paid any attention to the markets uh, it's been definitely a, a roller coaster year a tough year for that matter when it comes to the market and so far as i'm concerned when we're only 13 million dollars down for of uh, the year of not bad for for what we were dealing with now we'll take and do a transfer to the rainy day fund unless something happens that'll be between 200 and 13 million dollars and 200 and Forty million dollars. Those numbers are yet to be decided, uh, but to that uh, we've got a, uh, a mechanism in place where we capped the rainy day fund, uh, made it so it had to be 20 percent of the general revenue budget, and we'll actually have to do a transfer over that. That'll make it so that we end up with a right around 1.1 billion dollars in the rainy day fund. Personally. Uh, if I had my way about it, I would change that. Uh, and the reason for it is it's, it's still too high uh, for things. And we've got investments that we need to do in the state of West Virginia. Uh, the pension reports uh, are all still basically the same as what they've been in the past. Uh, from that standpoint, which is good. The pensions in the state of West Virginia are excellent. Now, in this year's budget, uh, we actually spent... Uh, pre-spent. Uh, it's called the surplus section, where we took uh, resources to excess revenues uh, that we've been squeezing out of the agencies and all, and then redirecting them so that we continue this growth pattern in the state of West Virginia. And th the number for that is $1,165,000,000. So you take and subtract that from $1.9. Um, like I said, I'm going to go a little bit on the higher side. And that frees up what is that, about $750 million of debt we'll have left over from that. $400 million of it is in a personal income tax reduction fund, of uh, which is unnecessary. And I thought it was going to be vetoed out of the budget. But that's parked over there uh, from that standpoint. But we have things that uh, we still need to go in and address in our budget. And I prefer not to talk about those a whole lot because we're in the middle of discussions with the governor's office the House of Delegates, so that we can get these things worked out. 
Can, can you explain to me what the, you said? Four hundred million in a, in a personal income tax fund is that like a, a backfill in case revenues go down? Or uh, um, yeah, imagine it as a rainy day fund. So it's, it's a rainy day fund in addition to the rainy day fund. Correct. Uh, it's a rainy day fund just spe specifically for the reduction of the personal income tax. And it was a remnant of the House version of the personal income tax plan. And when we went and did the final product is set up in such a way that it is almost impossible that you'll ever need uh, uh, to have a reserve fund to be able to uh, take care of the personal income tax reduction. And, uh, and I was adamant about this. I was not going to get us into a position of being the finance chair of the past, and my finance chair agreed with me. Uh, the Senate agreed. Uh, all of us did, that we were not going to uh, put ourselves in a position to where we reduced the personal income tax so much that you would actually have to come back of a year or two or three, whatever, because it's cyclic. You have good years, you have bad years, uh, but you don't want to get yourself in a position where you come back and you have to increase the taxes on the people of West Virginia. And that's what that rainy day fund would have done, but that was when they were wanting to uh, reduce the uh, personal income tax by over, uh, I think it was $1.4 billion. And that, that was way over. That, that was too much for what we could do at this point in time. So we put in a mechanism to make it so that we can reduce it as we grow our economy uh, that and grow our, our revenue streams that it will automatically reduce personal income taxes. And there will be a 10% trigger this year. No question about it. So the 21.25% uh, will go to 31.25%. Do you mean the other way around? The, you know, no. No. No, th this current year, uh, when you file your taxes uh, this coming January, you have, and actually it's already been reduced off of your withholdings of, on your paychecks. Uh, it's it's reduced 21.25%. Gotcha. I'm sorry. I was thinking the wrong way. Year. Yeah, and now, well, a year from then, it'll be 31.25%. Unless we do something legislatively to increase it or smooth it out or something like that, which I don't see that happening. In a time we we got all of this this extra cash, and at the same time we're having a hard time keeping teachers, and we've got problems with with correctional officers and, and that sort of thing. And, and so much of what I hear in talking with these folks, we have a hard time competing with pay. We try to get locality pay, and that doesn't work out well. So is it time perhaps to spend some of this surplus money on on issues like that? Uh, yes, uh, but let's be clear now for the, the teachers and state employees, school service personnel have received a 5% pay increase, a 5% pay increase, a 5% pay increase, a $2,300 pay increase, and a 21.25% reduction on the personal income tax as well as all the personal property taxes they pay on their automobiles. So that work has been getting done done. Uh, we, we are very cognizant uh, of that. When it comes to locality pay, thank the WVEA and the AFT out there for being opposed to locality pay. Uh, and I understand, I, I'm in favor of that, uh, of being able to do it. The federal government does it. Most other states do it. We need to do it. Uh, but that, that has not happened at this point in time when it comes to, especially the teachers, okay, and the school service person. Now, now, when you want to talk about corrections workers, I've got a meeting this afternoon at, th I think it's at 3 o'clock, it's either 2 or 3 o'clock, and we're working out the details for that, uh, and uh, we will get that 
right as well. And you can do locality pay for correction workers. That's already in place. It's a matter of whether they choose to do that in the agency or not. Uh, there, there have been some savings. These meetings have been going on, by the way, since the end of the session. Uh, and then we keep expanding them out. And I've been using the holistic approach uh, to doing this. And that means that we've been having the Supreme Court, uh, Circuit Courts, actually. Uh, we had people People in from Berkeley County talking about how they save money uh, with the regional jails and was able to manage that through the drug courts and the day reporting. Huntington has come in and reported to us as well. Then, we're, of course, we're meeting with Corrections Secretary Sandy and many of the people there. Uh, and so there are a whole, whole host of things that we are doing to be able to, to, to bring uh, efficiencies into this. And this is a legacy. We uh, put money into it. I think it was $10,000 ahead of back in 2018 or 19. Uh, I think it was 19. And um, that was supposed to solve the problem. It didn't. And so we had been watching it. And so some of the things that's come out of this meeting is that uh, number one is they hire 600 new employees a year. 300 of them quit before the end of the year. And they sent them to the State Police Academy. It costs like $16,800 for each one of them to be sent to the academy. Well, that's $4.8 million. What, and for half of them to quit? And many of them didn't know what they were getting into. You know, you, you want a job. You go in, then you say, oh, this is not right for me. And so now what they're doing, and this has come from these meetings, and they've already implemented it. It doesn't take a statute to do this, uh, but it may, so that you can put them on the job training, take them in, let them see what's happened, get a feel for it, to, uh, to chat up. Uh, one of the uh, a CO1, CO2, CO3, shot them and see what's going on. Correction officers one, two, and three. When I said CO, and so you allow them to shot them, that helps weed that out before you invest in them by sending them to the academy. That's going to pay dividends in the long run, and that could, that money can be directly shifted to increased wages uh, for them. Another thing that's taken place, and I'm astounded by it, to be quite honest with you, and frankly, I was the one that figured this out, uh, we don't have a shortage of the CO4s, 5s, 6s, of the higher rankings. What we have a shortage of is the CO1s, 2s, and 3s, those that like the privates, corporals, sergeants, uh, the ones that do a lot of the day-to-day -day work with uh, the, the inmates, so to speak. And of what, what, what it is is that if you wanted to get a pay raise, you had to go from a CO1 to a CO2 or a CO2 to a CO3. And the people, if you've got people that want to stay and they like what's going on, the only way to get a pay raise is there was two ways. Across the board pay raise that we've been doing in, in the state these last four or five years, or you had to move up in, from a CO1 to a CO2. Well, there are a lot of people that would that like working at that level but they had to be promoted into more of an administration administrative position to be able to get an increase in pay that's going to get changed and then what you do is you have uh, steps or classes of where if you're a CO2 you can be a CO2 class 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and so you could be a CO2 for 10 years and be able to get pay raises in that time period and you may actually be making more than a CO3 or a CO4 but it's because you've been there and you've been doing their job and let's keep in mind that not everybody's cut out to be an administrator same thing is in the public education system too. You know, the last thing you want to do is to have a really good teacher in the classroom. And what happens? They go to the administrative position to be a principal, vice principal, whatever, and they're not in the classroom doing what they do best. 
And so this is, we're going to go in and hopefully I'll work out a deal to be able to, to solve that. We're hoping to get day reporting of, in, in drug courts throughout the state also. And, and there's a whole host of things that come into play with this. But we're, again, I'm going to use the word holistic. Uh, we're taking uh, uh, all the above approach on to, to getting this so that it is going to be uh, functioning in, in a, an efficient and economical manner well into the future, regardless of who the executive is or how the legislature is maintained. So this restructuring of the the CO ranks and having the steps in between, which, by the way, I think is a brilliant idea, is that something that can be accomplished at a, at a conference table, or does it require a vote? So uh, the, the, that's still part of the discussion. I believe it's going to require a vote, though, uh, to do it. Uh, but anything that we can do at the conference table, then we do it. Uh, and what we need to do is have agreement and keep in mind that uh, the, our opportunity for a special session this year is in August uh, when we have the interims down here. Uh, they're getting ready to do a bunch of remodels in the House of Delegates, and it's going to be down for a good many months. It'll be November December before things are back up on operational. Do you, we'll get there. Don't fear. S Senator, these sound really good, and I, and I was able to hear Delegate Kelly. Um, he, he shares a lot of optimism that, that a solution, at least the first steps of a solution, are, are imminent and probably going to be able to occur in August, special session. Well, this... Uh, <sighs> Here in the Eastern Panhandle, a lot of the correction officers, they, maybe they can get the training and then they go across, you know, a couple miles down the road to Maryland and make more money. Is Do you think that these solutions will help combat that as well? Yes, I do. In fact, I'm quite certain of it. That's a pretty good answer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and I don't want to elaborate any further I understand. Can I leave it go? <laughs> yeah, you... Absolutely, and you know it, it's we're almost there in August in the special session. Um, well, is there any other issues that are going to be taken up in August special session? Uh, th th there'll be a whole host of uh, th shifting monies around and, and managing things, whether it's moving money from one account to another for PIA, uh, th 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 transferring, uh, to, I'm hoping, $150 million into the road fund. And to remember, as we've been controlling our spending, we've transferred $100 million to the road fund, $130 million to the road fund, $150 million to the road fund, and hope to do another. Another 150 this this year, and um, to, to, let me explain to you something you to you and your listeners also. And, and whenever I'm hesitant on saying things, when you've got people at a negotiating table, what I don't want to do is say things that will undermine coming to an agreement. Uh, so, to, and I'm not a dictator; I'm a facilitator. I'm a guy that gets everybody to the table, and then you try to find win-win-win scenarios so that everybody can walk away from the table feeling good. And whenever I have to parse my words when we're in negotiations on being able to get things done, uh, so that I, I don't mean to be elusive, uh, but ultimately, it's much better to get an end product of that works for all the people of West Virginia, and we get better results long term. And, and so I'm proud of how uh, I go about managing this stuff, And but it, sometimes it sounds like I don't want to tell the whole story. Well, it's true, uh, but I will get there in the in the proper time. Is if assuming everything works out with this, the, the, the pay for corrections officers, is there, can this be a model for the teachers, teacher one, two, three, and? Well, the teachers already have steps uh, for, for there. So actually, I was shocked of whenever I found out that they didn't have steps when it comes to the correctional officers. 
of and so and, and how they ended up getting top heavy on this which we would have known about it sooner uh, from that standpoint and nobody's an expert in everything uh, when it comes to this we're a citizens legislature and it takes the years of experience and dealing with it and then you still get surprised I've been around for over 20 years and I got surprised on this one but we drilled into it we found it uh, when it comes to the teachers no I just hit the nail on the head at the beginning of the show telling you what the problem was with that and I'm I'm not union bust and I can carry the lust on that my wife's union but the fact of the matter is the unions need to pull their head out of the sand and realize that the cost of housing and the taxes associated with that housing are different in certain areas of the state and we will get there and here's how we're going to get there for it. You need to have more growth areas in the state of West Virginia. It can't be just the Eastern Panhandle. And I'm, we're working diligently to be able to do that. Montegalia County, uh, that, that's a growth area. North Central West Virginia is becoming a growth area. Mason County will become a growth area. Putnam County is a growth area. Now, this is where you're able to get those alliances. And then you're able to come in and get the locality pay because that is something that takes care of or needs to be done statutorily because of the way the pay structure is in the state of West Virginia. It's actually in statute. So are there, yesterday we had um, uh, Sheriff Harmon and um, Mike Lang on, on the show and they were talking about developing a plan to change the way we, the, we transport um, I'm going to get these terms wrong. Mental health, uh, it, people with mental health issues who are in the legal system, apparently they have to all come back for personal appearances, and it, it requires transport time that's ridiculously expensive. And and, uh, and are you familiar with this at all? Have they talked to you about? I'm very familiar with it, and it's on the table. Okay. Uh, it's, it's on the table part of this. This is why I use the word holistic. It's all part of the cost of whether to the sheriff's department, to the county, uh, to the, the, the corrections. Uh, it, it, it all becomes part of it, and this is why I use that word holistic approach. We're trying to squeeze everything that we possibly can in, and even if we don't get it all in August, we will not forget about it, and we will bring in the rest of it in January. This is where I need to get these agreements to be able to get it done. But Sheriff Harmon's exact, or absolutely right, and we're wanting to get there. So what else do we expect to be on the agenda for the special session? I think I've read through what... I know of there of uh, fire EMS, uh, the way that's done. No, I don't have an agreement. We're still in meetings with that, uh, but I do believe that we'll get of uh, that managed to where uh, there'll be more money that will be uh, moved out to the counties. Of uh, when we finished up the session, that was a bill that I actually, we had like six minutes left in the session, I called over to the speaker and said, where's that bill at? And uh, he told me it's not coming, he wasn't going to do it. That one was uh, evenly spread out throughout the state. We are working on one right now, and I'm wanting to do 75% uh, spread throughout the state, and then the other 25% is distributed in the growth areas. Uh, and th this is where it becomes an issue. Uh, when you're in a rural, rural area, well, you service less people, but you still need to have the response time to be able to get the fire department or the EMS to that home. But then you have uh, more urban areas like we're at uh, that they're paying more of the tax to be able to create to have that so they need to get their share and they've got greater runs so we're, I'm, I call that one a hybrid and I'm, I'd like to see 75% of the, throughout the state and then 25% going to the more urban areas where the population density is higher and keep it and I forget the right rating uh, the, the, uh, the acronyms for it uh, but keep in mind that we're rated collectively in the state of West Virginia when it comes to fire and all that. So we need to make sure that's right or your insurance will go up. And ultimately, what we're trying to do is to keep insurance rates down or even go lower. 
Well, Senator, I don't know how you keep it all straight in your head. we got to go. We're at the bottom of the hour here. Thank you so much for your time and for calling in, and I'm sure we'll talk to you again soon. Okay, thank you. All righty, take care.